My altar is calling in you, O oh God, who is like unto thee, O oh Lord, who is like unto thee. This is the last Sunday in 2022. He's always doing. One more time, who is like unto you? Oh. Who is like unto you?
You are worthy to be praised. You are redeemer. You are worthy to be praised. to just lift up your heart your heart to God just lift up your heart to him to be praised. You are our redeemer. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You deserve all the glory. You are redeemer. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are If we are here, it's because you kept us. You are worthy to be praised. 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 I protect us. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. I pray, You are worthy to be praised. I pray, You are worthy to be praised. to 
to be praised. You are a miracle. You are worthy to be Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 With our hearts, we thank you. We acknowledge your faithfulness. We bless you, O oh God. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Jehovah. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. 
Thank you. Blessed be God. Take all the glory, O God. In Jesus' name. Please sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, um, while... All the testimonies were going on. I, I remembered a particular testimony, a particular story. I don't know if the person shared it or not. I can't. I don't know that, but I know she comes around. I don't even know if she's here today. But you know, when um, I think it was yet, and I was talking about the status, right? You know, well, the I think it was in the course of the fast or something. One of those days, I had a conversation with somebody who was, you know, who wanted to wanted to help. He was just looking for who to help. Sorry, can you all hear me? Can you hear me from this side? You can hear me. Feeling like I'm not, but it's okay. Can you hear me at the back? You can't hear me very well. Uh, sorry, I'm sure they're working on it. I don't know. They can't hear at the back. Okay. So, um. we had that conversation, the person was willing to help and the person, the person called me and uh, we finished talking and I was looking for who to give some money to. You know, and when we finished talking, I was like, okay, fine, I was going to look for somebody and let's see what happens. And I had, I absolutely had nobody in mind, nobody. You know, and then after we ended the call, Somebody now called me from here, from fellowship. And when the person called, the person now, the person was like, Sir, I'm so sorry. I'm calling you now. Uh, I need some help. If I can just get, I think it was 2000 or something. If I can just get 2000 there's no money in the house. Of course, the person doesn't have, I think, both parents and, and no more, no, but I didn't even remember the person. Like, it's been a long time we spoke, very long. And the person called to ask for 2000 If she can just get, no, it wasn't even food. I think she said she had a project or something, an assignment to submit, and there was no, the money, she didn't have enough money. Right? I think I called you on that matter. And she didn't have enough money to submit the assignment, and it was how much? 2000 3000 you know, and immediately I remembered I just finished the conversation like 30 minutes ago, or maybe less than 30 minutes ago, on somebody who was willing to help. You know, so of course we sorted out the 3,000 issue, right? I think we, we sent 3,000. You know, but and now and I said, wait, let me. I'm just trying to tell you that there are many ways that God works. You know, she said her own was status. <laughs> now, I'm not saying all of you should go and put your account number on status to this night. Say, <laughs> if the Lord is leading you, please. <laughs> you can put it, but... For her that day, the way the Lord led her, 
to be helped or that she should call for assignment, 3,000 naira. So then I asked her, what do you do? She now told me that she used to do this, this before her, her father passed. The mother had died a long time before then, before her father passed. And then at that point, she had stopped. There was no money for it. And then and I said, okay, so how much would, you, would be enough for you to do this thing that you want to do? She said, if she can even get 30,000, she can start. Just At first, she said 50, so I think she was afraid. The 50 was, it sounded too big. So she now brought it to 30,000. If she can get 30,000, she can start. You know, there's a way you ask for some kind of money to discourage the person that wants to give you. So maybe that's what she felt. I said, okay, no problem. I would look into it. So I told her, I said, I want to just write. I just wanted to see if she, you know, how she would use that money. I said, just write something out, you know, and bring. Let me see, like, maybe a business plan, maybe just a little um, abstract, something for your business. So the day she now came, I had already finalized the discussion. I already knew how much I was going to, we were going to give her. So when she came, the paper she brought, there was, there was really nothing inside. You know, what was written, it didn't matter. I just wanted to see how. So she was even apologizing that she used her hand, she could not type it, she could not leave this one. This is a settled matter. I just needed to. So when she finished reading everything, and then we spoke, I now told her, I was like, okay, well, um, so you say you need how much? You say 30,000. Yeah. And I said, okay. So, so, and so, someone wanted to help. So we had discussed your matter. So when I told the person, we concluded that we were going to give you 100,000. The lady began to cry. The way God helped her was because she remembered that she had not called me for a long time. Not called me. <laughs> That's how we sent her the money. And the person who sent the money said, I want to even watch. Let me see if she uses it well and the thing is moving. I'm willing to sponsor more. So please don't call me after this service. Because some of you are really to say, okay. So, so, so that day I, was, I wanted to call him that. It was the Lord that said I should call him. <laughs> Please don't call me. <laughs> if you call me, we'll pray on the matter. And the Lord will help you. You see, sometimes there's nothing wrong with asking. Hmm? I know some of you are too big, you can't ask. There's nothing wrong with asking. Some of you, even when we want to ask, you make it look like you are, you are doing the person a privilege when you're asking. Before you ask, you say, you know, <laughs> it's not as if I don't have, but I use it to do something, then calm down, ask. Humble yourself and ask. The worst that can happen is a no. Are we correct? We are not saying that you should be a beggar. Do you understand? Uh-uh. Ask. And don't ask for unnecessary things. Hallelujah. I just remember that because of the status testimony. John chapter 1. Father, help us. Let not one person live here the way they came. In the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1. From verse 1. Hallelujah. 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 All the issues that came with this year, you will leave them in this year. Hallelujah. I don't know who I speak of, uh, uh, whether it's you or you're standing for somebody. 
I don't know, but 2023 will be the year for delivery. It will be your year for delivery. I, I actually even mean literal delivery. You're having issues or any delays, 2023, you will carry your baby. So if you are standing for somebody, send the word to the person. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. One to five. Let's read. One to three. Let's go. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse two. And the word, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. Very interesting scripture, and this is a scripture we, we, most of us know. Let's go back to verse 1. I like the way it was John now who was giving us his own testimony. You know of the gospel, and while some other gospels began with all kinds of genealogies from Adam and all of that, John actually went to the very beginning of things because he wanted us to see something, and then from there he will help us, you know, to know what we are into and how to advance on our journey with God. So, when John was speaking, he said, "In the beginning." Is going back to the beginning. He said, in the beginning was the word. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, in the beginning was the word. In the actual sense of the beginning, you know, when we talk about the beginning most of the times, and we want, we, um, you know, God's purpose on earth and man and all of those things, for most of us, the beginning always starts with Adam, you know. But John now made us understand that in the beginning was not Adam. In the beginning was the word. Please follow me. In the beginning was actually not Adam. In the beginning was who? Was who? Was the word. You know, it is because of that. That. um, And that's the reason why. From that point. From that point. Everything that manifested. Or that came into existence came by the word. Please follow me. At the time when that changed was when man now fraternized with the serpent. But the original design from above and God's original design for creation and manifestation is that everything is actually supposed to begin, okay, with the word. Yes. As a matter of fact, anything that does not begin with the word is not from God. You know, last week I told you something. I said, anything that happens, okay, that the Holy Spirit does not sponsor, are we correct? Is not of God. God does not move if the Holy Spirit is not, or God is not at work if the Holy Spirit does not move. That's what I said last week. Now I'm bringing you the other part. Okay? That nothing, nothing, as far as God and manifestation is concerned, nothing happens if the word of God is not what begins it. If it's not what originates it, God is not in it. That's the reason why in verse 3 of this same scripture, I'm building something, follow me. We're going somewhere. That's the reason why in the beginning, in verse 3 of this scripture, you now hear where the Bible says, all things were made by who? By him, the word. Because the entire concept of things being made, as far as heaven is concerned, is that it must be by the word. If the word is not what made it, it doesn't matter how tangible it is, as far as God is concerned, nothing has been made. So that's why the Bible said, all things were made by him, and without him, are you seeing that? Was not anything made that was what? Now, do you know, in, uh, just uh, especially if you're not very good with English, this scripture would have confused you already. Without him was not anything made that was. Uh, what are you saying? 
without him was not anything made that was made. It means that anything that is made without him, as far as heaven is concerned, it is nothing. That's what that scripture is telling you. By him were all things made. Hmm. Okay. If I take this, it may take us, but let's go. No problem. Wherever we stop is fine. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Why do you think on the last day when our works are tried with fire? Okay? It's not as if there are no works. Are you following? They are tangible works. You, you, for example, you built a hospital. Is that not tangible? Even if it is for free, is that not a good thing? But you see, on that day when all of our works are tried, they will try it with fire. And if they realize that it wasn't, it was without him. Eh? It was without him. At that point, even heaven will say nothing was made. You see, the original concept of revival, because most times when we talk about revival, we talk about revival from the standpoint that, okay, we are going back. Because, of course, revival actually means we are bringing back to life that which was. Are we correct? Are we correct? Then the question is, what is that which was? Are you following me? What is that which was? Because when we talk about re- most of the times, and, and don't get me wrong, Adam was awesome until something happened. But in the original scheme of things, with God's original intention and idea, that which was is not even Adam. That which was is the word. So in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So you can say in the beginning was the word. In the beginning the word was with God. And in the beginning the word was what? So revival is not back to Adam. Revival is not even back to, it's not back to Abraham. Revival is not back to Moses. Revival is back to the word. Somebody say back to the word. Back to the word. The unadulterated word of God. Matthew 19. I'm trying to build something very quickly. Matthew 19, 7. You will see how God, or let me say, yes, of course God, is literally obsessed about the beginning that's what I'm showing in this scripture. Matthew 19, 7. Look at what, what happened here. The Bible says, they say unto him, they were speaking to Jesus, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? You know this story, right? You know the story? The people had come to Jesus and they were inquiring of him what should happen, you know, in a case of divorce and all of that. And Jesus was telling them something that was contrary to what they had always believed. They now said, why? Then if this one you are saying is true, then why did Moses now say that we can actually divorce with a letter? Then we can now put her away after we give her the letter of divorcement. Look at what Jesus said. Verse 8. Jesus said, he said unto them, Moses, because of the what? Hardness of your hearts suffered you to put away your wives. But what? But what? So are you seeing Jesus' standard? Jesus' standard for measurement is the beginning. He's not, he's saying that even though at a point Moses had to even permit you to do that, that thing that Moses said you should do was not the original plan of God. And as far as God is concerned, in the beginning, it was not so. The reason why it now seems so in your time is because of the hardness. Of your heart. So there are so many things that seem to be so now that were not in the beginning. And the reason why is because men's hearts had. It's 
would have been easy for everybody to say, okay, now, because Moses had gone several years after, before now, he's a respected prophet. He had given them certain things to follow, and they had been following that for many, many years. You would even say that is culture. But Jesus is now saying that that one that you are using Moses to talk about now, the reason why that reality began to manifest was because of the hardness. It's because men's hearts became hard. So men now tilted away from the beginning. Meanwhile, in the beginning, it was not so. And that beginning that we speak about is the word. Are you following me? So, if God is working with a man and God wants to take that man far, one of the first things that God would want to do is to ensure that he takes you back to the beginning. Because in the beginning, it was actually the word. You know, you think, I hope I'm not going ahead of myself, but it's fine. You think that Jesus was an option it was a second option it was an afterthought because of what happened with adam but you know the um when um ruth was giving her charge you remember what she said it is the wisdom somebody said the wisdom of god yes god he's so wise and i say it a lot of the times i say there are times when i see god do certain things and i think i've said it here many times and when I see some of the things that happen, I cannot understand, I cannot trace his fatherhood. I know he's a father. I know he is my father. I know he is our father. Sometimes he don't, certain things happen. And I know that Kai, a father will not allow these kinds of things to happen. How many of you understand what I'm trying to say? How many of you understand what I'm trying to say? How many of you have had situations before where you'd be like, Kai, God. But no, no, this should not be, you understand? In those moments when I cannot trace his fatherhood, I trust his wisdom. I trust his wisdom. Yes. It's true. And I tell him that God, there are times I sincerely cannot trace this fatherhood thing about you, but I trust your wisdom. I may be crying in the midst of that situation, but I trust your wisdom. know that there's never a day where he has given up on me or he had lost control of things sometimes it may be hard if you forget anything don't forget this sometimes when it is hard to trace his fatherhood trust his wisdom so Jesus is saying that because of the hardness of the hearts of the people because of the hardness of the hearts of the people, it is becoming difficult for certain things to happen. And while you feel like this is the norm now, really, the reason why it looks like the norm is because your hardness of heart had tilted you away from what was from the beginning. You see, that hardness of heart is so, is, so, is so serious. That's one of the major contentions that God has as far as man is concerned because we will not allow him flow. So, Let's see the scripture, Isaiah 66. I've read this before here recently. Isaiah 66 from verse 1. Look at what the Bible said. It said, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things had my hand made, and all those things have been, say the Lord. In other words, there's nothing that I would see or that you would show me that will fascinate me. There's nothing, all of the creations and everything, I'm the one that made them. Are we correct? But now look at it. But to this man, will I what? You know, when you enter a place that... that that has many amazing things, you know. Or maybe you enter a place where you uh, many amazing things. Let me use that word. And you've seen most of the amazing things there, except for one that is just so intriguing. And so, when you step into that place, 
what happens to you it catches your attention are we correct so while people may even be looking at other things like wow what i've seen that one i've seen this one but this one this is the one that i'm i'm drawn to eh? so god is the one speaking he said my hand made all those things and all those things have been said the lord but to this man will i look who is that man not every man do you understand not every man so god can come to this place now hmm? show up and in the midst of this crowd there's only one person that is catching his attention and he's just looking at that person in amazement what's that quality he said, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, who does what? Who trembles at what? What word? That which was from the beginning. This man is not carried away by what you call tradition or by what you call culture. This man is not carried away by what every other person is doing. For this man, if he ever does a thing, he does it because God said so. Have you seen that scripture, Psalm 51, verse 17, a popular scripture? Psalm 51, 17. Let's see. Let me show you something. <laughs> Psalms 51. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contract heart. Oh God, thou will not what? It's practically impossible for God to despise this, this heart. This heart may not be the most powerful, but anytime God sees this heart, it's impossible to despise. So the Bible is telling us, it say, we know, we know, we know your side. That, that's what the psalm is saying here. You see, we know your weakness. We know your, we know the button to press. And that button is a broken spirit. You see, when God finds a broken spirit, and a contrite heart. The Bible says God will not despise. He cannot. It doesn't matter what sin seeks to take his attention. Think of the, amaz the amazement of the sun. Think of the oceans and the many wonders in the world. That, that's what Isaiah 66 was telling us. Say, I made all those things. He said, but to this man will I look. So just in case there was an excursion, and God is amongst the many other creatures and people who come out, and they are looking at things, and they look at the sun, and somebody is like, wow, look at this ball of fire. You need to study geography to understand some of these things. To, to see the sun, that ball of fire is an amazing sight. You, 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 you can't put your head around it. How the earth revolves around it is an amazing sight. Think of the many wonders of the world that we cannot even explain. Even the scientists with all of their researches and everything they've been doing, all they can say about the universe, they don't call it the universe, they call it the known universe. Because there is a part that they keep discovering every time as they go on research. And while there are many of those wonders, God is saying that, see, let me tell you. You see all those things? When I see a man eh, who trembles at my word, ah, that man is, is of greater wonder than even the sun that burns every day. That's my wonder. And do you know the reason why that is a wonder for God? Because it is only those men that are the hope for the restoration of that which was from the beginning. If that which was from the beginning will be restored in our time, then men 
must begin to tremble at the word of God. Unfortunately, as time goes every day, there are many more things that seek our attention. Please follow me. We are going somewhere. I'm still building. There are many more things that seek our attention. There are many more things that makes it even more difficult, except you make up your mind to remove everything out of your eyes. There are many more things that make it more difficult for us to tremble at the word of God. Now we see people... There is nothing we take for granted like the word of God. The average believer, when he even comes to church or he comes to the house of God, he comes for what he can get. There's nothing in him that trembles at the word of God. So when God's word is even coming, you know, he he takes the word of God as if he's doing God a favor. One of those times I was with God. <laughs> I was praying. And while I was praying, please listen to me. It's Christmas. This is my Christmas message. While I was, we were talking. He now showed me, showed me people, believers. I was watching and I've had those kinds of experience many times even physically with people where maybe we're in a prayer meeting and then in the course of the prayer I'm not sure if I want to say this. And prayer is going on. And everybody is doing many things as prayer is going on. Many things. I'm not even saying it as if I'm not a victim myself. Sometimes... In the course of the prayer, prayer is going on and we begin to sleep. And then when we are done, we laugh about it. And God said, He told me, He said, Ben, is this what we are raising? said, I've sent you to raise an army. This cannot be an army. Say, you won't go far like this. You won't go far like this. It's the last Sunday, sorry. When we feel next day is Happy New Year. Have you? Will rejoice. Say you won't go far like this. Say, can you remember how? Can you remember how Gideon's army was selected? Can you remember? Do you know how they were selected? He first used fear and courage as the first test. Then he took them to the water eh? to check out who was alert and who was not. Then the rest will go back. (laughs) 
in the Old Testament, when people were going to fight an enemy that is human, hmm? what God used as a test to select the few that we go for that battle was water to drink. Now, now, we are the ones. Eh? If I, we are the ones who even welcome the sleep. It's not. So you want to use it? It's God. It's God. He's merciful. If we sleep, we wake up. We wake up. We continue. And we have done it before. We, we, we sleep and we wake up. Some we laugh. We even laugh at ourselves. And God said, "This, this is not the army that will quench darkness." It's not. I found out recently that what you called weakness is a lie. I found out. I found out recently that tiredness is an excuse in the flesh. Is a lie. If you believe it, it will prevail. If you if you fight it, it will break. So now there are people who we celebrate as prayer men. This one is a prayer man. He's no, see, let me tell you, in the kingdom, there's nothing like that. God, he said, I made everything. Say, but you see, the man I tremble, the man that I look at is the one who trembles at my word. Ah. Today we talk about Jesus, that he came. We're excited about it. Yesterday I sat and I began to ponder. And I said to myself, you know, you know there are certain people in relationships, I don't think it is gender sensitive anymore. Before I would have said there's a particular gender that was like that, but I don't think it is gender. But there are certain people in relationship that on their birthday they wanted to give them gift. On your own birthday, they still want you to give them gifts. How many of you does that? Okay. <laughs> no, no, it's not gender sensitive. There are people like that. Everything, you are the one that we give. And I began to wonder. I said, now we are talking of Christmas. Right? And everybody shouting, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. Okay. I think it's the day that we are going to mark Jesus' own. Eh? You are the one that wants to eat more than Jesus. Jesus, you, you want to eat more than him. <laughs> it, it now becomes the hardest day for people to even be spiritual. Have you not found out? Uh-uh. The Jesus that we are talking about, who came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire, is the one that we are now celebrating. And on the day we say, okay, we mark out. Whether it is his birthday or not, at least it's the day we have set out to mark his birthday. Are we correct? That's the day where we become the least sensitive in the spirit. That's the day we pray less. That's the day we eat more. Some of you <laughs> say, no, 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 not today. Today, today, no. <laughs> We'll go fast tomorrow. <laughs> we <laughs> say no by now, Pastor Ben, they talk. Bring that chin chin. Bring that chin chin. Where they, where they, we'll... It's the day we talk about him the most. But it's the day we live for him the least. think about the fact that okay today is okay let's um, as a way to mark it i know that he came to save the lost can i give him a soul today let me let me tell somebody about jesus but the the last person on our mind is the one who we are celebrating it's all about us I was even shocked that I drove past this road and I was able to pass normally. I was shocked. 
this road is usually a no pass zone during Christmas and during New Year because I said, oh, if this is the only good thing Buhari has done, no problem. <laughs> Because now people are calculating how much they will think. <laughs> so, boy, leave that in. We talk about him the most, but we leave for him the least. Imagine going for somebody's bed there and you want to take the shine. Imagine that. Or somebody's wedding. They are the one who wants to snap a groom. Hey. we have been able to sustain the ceremony eh? and we excluded the celebrant is a wonder so the event is very is very weighty in our hearts but the person the very person say leave that date that date now for So, so now this period, even ministries and a lot of us, you know, we, we and I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but please understand me. What we fix in moments like this, uh, fun activities, because it's holiday. Question, holiday from what? Because when I checked my dictionary, I now found out the definition for holiday. It is break from work. You would have worked before there's holiday now. There are so many people who don't. <laughs> Let's leave that one. For a lot of you, it's not holiday. It's just another day. <sighs> so it's a time to just relax. Just have fun. Social media has made it easy. There is happy birthday, happy Merry Christmas designs everywhere. All you need to do is just get one, put your picture by the side like this. <laughs> oh God, oh God. Just put your picture by the side, you just stay from one angle. Merry Christmas. How, how, how were we able to sustain the event? And we disconnected from the celebrant. You know, we're talking about the word. God is saying that I'm, I've been looking for men who will tremble at my word. Because the original design was in the beginning was the word and the word was a God and the word was a God and the same was with God in the beginning. And verse 3, he said, without him was there nothing made that was made. Okay? Then verse 4, he said, and in him was what? was life I'm trying to show you why Jesus came he didn't just emerge in him was life and that life was what was the light of men and you know what happens when there is light there is direction when there is light there is focus when there is light there are no confusions so it means that he came to live his life so men can have light so they can focus. So the actual reason he came was not just because he came to a match. It's so that he can give men direction. And that light shines in darkness. No wonder. Matthew chapter 4. Let's look at Matthew 4. 
quickly we'll come back here no wonder Matthew chapter 4 um, from verse 15 let's look at that Matthew 4 15 the Bible said the land of Zabulon and the land of Naphtali this thing is cutting please open your Bible I don't think it's let's do we have it together now Matthew open your Bible open your Bible don't worry we'll sort it Matthew 4 from verse 15 and the land of Zabulon and the land of Naphtali by the way of the sea beyond Jordan Galilee of the Gentiles the people which did what which sat in darkness the people which sat in darkness did you know why they sat in darkness they have been in darkness for too long it has become a comfort zone there is no hope to advance anymore there's nothing they could do because we can't go forward we can't go backwards so all they had to do was to settle there and then light came there, it was practically impossible to advance and the people who sat in darkness they saw great light and to them no 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 stay there stay there okay yes okay you found a way to adjust it go to 16 thank you and the people we sat in darkness saw great light and to them which sat in the region and in the shadow of death light did what it sprung up because before now men could not advance people were in one place and there was no motion there was no hope they had found darkness as a comfort zone <sighs> But now light has come. And how did the light come? A man's life. Jesus was not just another man that was born. He was light that came. The Bible said and in him was life. And that life was the what? Was the what? Was the light of men. It's called the word of life. He came with an intention. No wonder. No wonder when the angel appeared to the shepherds in Luke chapter 2. When they came, they told them, they said, We bring to you good tidings. Is it great tidings of good joy or good tidings of great joy? But they shall brought joy. In abundant measure. Say because something has come. And that day when they showed up for the angel, when the angel showed up to the shepherd, he, what they announced was the savior. Why it was the shepherd, I may not be able to tell, but I think I have an idea. Because even though they were shepherds, the greatest of the shepherds has been born and he has come to save the world. So rejoice. It's not just another child that has been born. Great light has come. And they said the sign that you will have is that when you go, you will see him wrapped in a cloth, kept in a manger. Ah. Ah. When it was Matthew's own account, it was a different story. I hope you know that the shepherds were not the wise men. They are two different people. For the wise men, when the wise men actually came to Jesus, Jesus was already grown. He was not, a, he was not in the manger. He was already grown. He was, he was about two years already. That's the reason why when Herod was going to command that they should kill him, he said from two years downwards. He wasn't in the manger. He was in the house. If you read the two, you will find out that in Luke, it was, he was referred to as a babe. In, in Matthew, he was referred to as a young child. But you see, one thing that 
that amazed me about that story is the fact that these men were in the east and from the east the light shone they saw a star and they followed that star because the announcement was that a king has been born he was born king He wasn't made king. He was born king. He came with his crown. It's not people that will put it on him. He was born king. So when they saw that star, the wise men, what the other people around did not see from the east, they came. And mind you, those people were not poor people. I hope you know. When you hear men from the east, you know, in Bible days, they are very wealthy. That's where Job came from. They came. They followed the star and they got to the palace because they were expecting that if he was born king, he should be born in. Because kings are not born where? They don't burn them anywhere. Unfortunately, what they didn't get is that the man came with his kingdom. <laughs> they went to the palace where Herod was. That would have been something for another day. And when they told Herod, ah, Herod said, please, where did you say the guy was born again? And they said, okay, please, when you see him, let me know. Me too, I want to come and worship. <laughs> and when they left, the man was plotting how to kill plotting how to kill the young lad and God told them don't go leave him they went they worshipped they gave their gifts and the Lord wanted them to go so they left when they left God came to Joseph and said carry the boy excuse me you know when I read these things like we said the wisdom of God but when I read these things I'm asking many questions God, do you know that children are about to die on account of this young boy now? Why didn't you stop it? It has been prophesied. So even when Herod thought that he was doing, being wicked, he was a victim of prophecy. And so God now told them, carry the boy, go to Egypt. Let prophecy take its course. One thing is sure, they may kill many children, but they will not kill the light. See, listen to me. Listen to me. I know many things are happening now. We are pressing and we are going to see to it that this wickedness ends in our time. But there's one thing I want you to also know. It doesn't matter how many people they attempt to kill. The light will still shine. Because all of a sudden they are bringing people to a place where some people are no longer afraid of death. Yes. Some people are beginning to realize that you know what? We won't be here after all forever. We must change the course in our time. We can't be cowards anymore. The same angel that told Joseph, run away, allowed Herod to carry out his course, even though he felt he was a wicked man. He was a victim of prophecy. And when that was done, guess what? The same angel went back and said, come back. He has finished what he was supposed to do. And when he finished, we have killed him. He's dead now return listen to me there is a seed and that seed is called the incorruptible seed nobody can quench it are you hearing me in the midst of the situations the church will rise I know it doesn't look like it I know it's hard for you to believe but in the midst of this whole thing the church will rise. You know why? Because now God will find men who will tremble at his word. Tremble. 
I know how so many people were praying the first time when, when the, this issue was happening very rampant everywhere. I know how prayers were going up. Prayers were going up. Prayers were going up. Men began to pray. And then when it looked like certain things were beginning to go down, did you notice what happened to the prayers? What happened? Men began to sleep. And God is saying, these people have not catch this thing yet. You see, this prayer, the intention was not just to make you pray so that the thing will stop. Even though in the midst of the prayer, the thing will stop. The prayer is supposed to continue because that's how we will build you. Into that which I'm calling you into. But we prayed, we cried, we shouted, we wanted it to end. And it looked like it was going down. The men began to sleep. And while men slept. Let me tell you, these things will not just end by prophecy. Yes, men will pray. And in the midst of the prayer, God will begin to raise a kind and a caliber of men who will encounter him. And even after the matter has ended, they would have found out at that point that prayer has become my abode. I wasn't just praying so that prayers can be answered, so that the killings will stop. Because the killings can stop, but darkness will still prevail. You think that the worst of the devil is the shedding of blood? Is the prevalence of darkness. And the intention of God is that the li- and this life, this life is the light of men. And the light will shine where? In darkness. I came to tell you. That you are beginning to lose touch with the reality of the life that you carry. (laughs) Because this thing you are doing now, this is not why Jesus came. It's not why he came. No, it's not why he came. First John chapter 1. I'm beginning to wrap up. First John chapter 1. Ooh. <laughs> no. You know, I, I started saying this thing last week. You can't end this year like this. You can't. make a man sleep too much when he's revealed your heart will burn with fire when those guys at Emmaus was walking with him did you remember what they said they said no wonder when he was speaking to us did our hearts not burn not burn say me John was speaking about Jesus he said me have come when I baptize you I baptize you with water it's me that used to make it look cold cold soft soft I baptize you with with the way he was speaking he said I baptize you with water he said but when he shall come how does he baptize with the Holy Ghost and with what with fire 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 It's not just a light that shines. It's a light that burns. Because as we touch that reality in him much more, you will realize that those things you call addictions will begin to die from your heart because the light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot comprehend him. He cannot. He he cannot lay hold on this. Darkness bows. That's why Jesus came. That's why he came. The disciples played around it for a while. And he told them, he said, See, I have many things to tell you, but you will not understand. Because at that point, they had not had the encounter with the Holy Ghost that is the spirit of that reality. They were walking with Jesus, but they were still sleeping anyhow. So when Jesus goes to pray and he comes back, he sees them sleeping. He goes to pray and he comes back. He just left them. He said, don't worry. I know I've encouraged you enough. 
but encouragement does not help in these kinds of matter it's the Holy Ghost that helps when he comes I have many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth shall come ah it was the same disciples who were sleeping for one hour prayer that held prayer on the upper room for days ah ah days where is the sleep now <laughs> when they met him they said Jesus why is it that your disciples do not fast he said don't worry don't worry don't worry don't worry leave this matter now he said he says now it's because the bridegroom is with them when the bridegroom is taken away oh yeah they have been too comfortable. The one who came did not come to give you comfort. He came to stir up the waters from your spirit until his light glows from you into the world and overcome. Say, don't worry. And he comes. Ah, you are complaining of fasting. Fasting. Wait. So the same guy who wrote John was now giving us first John and he was saying here look at what he said he said that which was from where from the beginning he's taking us back that which was from the beginning which we have heard which we have seen with our eyes who did he see who it was Jesus which we have seen with our eyes which our we have looked upon we looked upon him we didn't just see him we we kept studying we kept beholding okay because he is that life and because he is that life he has become our object of focus he's the one we fix our gaze on he says so who we have looked upon and when we looked upon him our hands have handled what did he say our hands handled the word of life <laughs> we found the one who was in the beginning and is not just a man is the word of life we've handled him he said thank you please sit down he said verse 2 let's go we'll read down to verse 10 for the life was what was what was manifested and we have seen it and we bear witness and we show unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us that which we have seen and heard we do what we did do you are you understanding the audacity of this statement that which we have seen and we have heard we declare that word declare doesn't just mean to speak it means to reveal it means to show up showcase because we have we have not just beheld him we have become what we beheld so now we have the capacity and the audacity to show him so that which we have seen and heard we declare unto you that you also may have what fellowship you know what fellowship is sharing in other words what what John was saying here is that we have we have seen him we have heard him we have touched him enough and we have become enough that we can now give you so we invite you into what we have so you can now share in that experience it's like a virus I know you say I know you, you are born again and you know you are born again but when was the last time you infected someone with the virus that you carry no 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 it's very important I know you speak to people every day but when was the last time you spoke to somebody and then the person could say Kai there's something I don't know what it is, but there's something about you that is biting me right now. There's something, but the question is, how can what you say bite somebody when it has not beaten you? You have the word that you don't tremble on. And you want somebody to listen to it and tremble. John had the audacity. He said, we invite you into that fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Continue. We're going far please help me quickly and these things write i unto you that your joy may be what 
but be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him. Ah! And we declare unto you. And what is that message? God is light. <laughs> it was when I read this I understood. When God showed up in Genesis chapter 1, and the Bible said, and the earth was dark from a void, and when he looked at it, and, he, and the earth and, and, the, um, and darkness was in the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered upon the waters, and God said, Let there be light. I understood it here. He said, This is the message God is light. What God did in Let There Be Light was that He introduced Himself, set the grounds. <laughs> and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. But if we walk in what? Are you seeing fellowship? And walk because your fellowship will always affect your work. I tell you, your fellowship will. You know, it began with that which was from the beginning. Now he has shifted from he who was and is speaking to us because Jesus did not just come as a man to just leave the earth, he came as light so that you can find your path in him. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from how many? All sins. If we say that we have no sin, we do what? And the truth is not what? Continue. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all. Verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we have what? And, and what happened? And his word. Somebody say his word. Somebody say his word. That's the man that God is looking for. The man who has his word in him. So what happens with that word when a man begins to fellow, when a man begins to fellowship with God? Come, let me tell you something. When a man begins to fellowship with God and he's advancing on that journey, and the word of God begins to settle in that man's heart, okay? One of the things that begins to happen with the word of God in that man's heart is that the word of God will begin to point areas that you need to attend to. I'm showing you how the light works. Because this is the message that we have declared to you: that God is light. And in him is no what? So there's nothing about that light that will hide the darkness in you. So when you begin to fellowship with him, if you have Jesus in you, the way Jesus grows, eh? Jesus can stay at the level you want him to stay, but if you want him to grow, he'll be showing you the areas that he needs to grow. So one of the things he will tell you is that, you see that lost? That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That's not me. So when you find that, you begin to say, no, 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 no. I can't continue in this part. God help me. You see that lie? That's not me. He said, if that man who seems to be fellowshipping with God now says that there is nothing in him that is wrong. He said, that man is actually telling the word that is telling him that that lost is not him. What that man is telling that word is that you are a liar. So something that you are supposed to kill, eh, that does not look like Jesus, and you are finding an excuse for that thing in your life, and you are continuing with it, what you are telling the world is that you are a liar. You are lying. You are lying. He's saying there's lust that needs to die. Say you are lying. Heaven's verdict is that that man does not have the word of God in him. <laughs> Do you know how Paul ended this testimony? In 1 Timothy chapter 3. We're closing here. 1 Timothy chapter 3. We'll pray now. 16. 
First Timothy 3.16. Paul was speaking, he said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And what is that mystery? That God was manifest in the flesh. He was justified of the spirit. He was seen by the angels. He was preached unto the Gentiles. He was believed on in the world. And then he was received up into glory. Everything I just said is what Paul is saying here. It's called the mystery of godliness. And the reason why God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, is so he can be preached to men. God didn't come for himself. Is so that men can believe him. And you know what happens when we believe? John chapter 1 verse 12. He said, for they that were his. He says, as many, but he said, his own. He came to his own and his very own rejected him. He said, but as many as received him. He gave them the power to become the sons of God. Even to them who believe on his name. That's how we are transformed. The journey of transformation begins with believing. So the mystery of godliness is that God came in the flesh with an intention so that man can live the God life. Man can live the God life. Don't leave this meeting the way you came. It's time to be serious with the one whose birth we claim to want to mark. Every year we are waiting for 25th. But we are living for ourselves. But there is a reason he came. And the land of Zebulon. And the land of Naphtali. they all sat in darkness. But then they saw a great light. Some of you, where the light needs to shine tonight is your prayer life. Some of you, where it needs to shine is your study life. Some of you, where it needs to shine is in your tongue. Your tongue, your tongue, your emotions. Pride, it needs to shine there. Jesus is saying, this is not why I came home. An army must rise. See, we are deliberate about it. And that's why I'm saying this thing in this meeting today. Because an army is about to rise. And we are at a point in this time. Listen to me. and I'm speaking prophetically by the Spirit of God. We are at a point in this time where what God is doing is a major selection. Don't be left out. Don't be left out. Don't allow that lost to deprive you of what God is about to do in a dispensation. Let's pray. God is saying, I made these things. But this is the man that I will look, the one who trembles. Ah, ah, ah.
Ah, trembles at my word. And God is saying that in the beginning it was not so. You can go back. He said in the beginning it was not so. When I designed you in my word, it was not so. <laughs> and what I've come to do, and that's revival, I've come to take you to the very beginning. Zion, awake and put on your garments. For we have come to the plain where armies rise, and you can't sleep now. You can't sleep now. No, not now. You can't sleep now. Not now. And he's saying to you, you are the reason I came. You are the reason I came. Say, he that will come after me is preferred before me. Is the one whose shoe latcheth I'm not worthy to untie. For I baptize with water. But when he shall come, he shall baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amante fei do baraste velai kama Ala barada bam raska va bela bronde vegi gobana kapera rebenam presko be me brika vono brende komli ilambros de venandro i kamembreta velai No Yes it is true there is a season set before you but you cannot step into it like this. So the light has come to shine. Abarande scobe mambrie cabenante. Rabadabande cobrie caparavie tambe. Rabababam rosca de mambre e camombre. Rebedem rosca penie. Rebedamena combre este papaela. Irababombre que mambre que vinata. Shabara. Rade magre esco vimberiete, rabe nambro se file ma brateco, rabe do barate membros ke feviate, rabandi eke te venambros ke belai, rabe le feride maracaya. In the name of Jesus. We'll pray for some few minutes. This is the last Sunday of this year. Something will begin to happen here. I see the Lord passing, passing us through something that looks like a furnace. 
I see, I see the Lord. Listen, just listen. I see the Lord passing us, every one of us, except you are not interested. I see the Lord passing us through something that looks like a furnace. And he's saying that as we go through this right now, there are certain things that came with you through the years. They will not go to, through with you past this year. I see the Lord putting an end. Some of you, you may need to be sincere with him and say, Oh God, let the fire touch this. Let it touch this. Let the fire touch this. Let it touch this. No. Are you ready to pray? No. This fear, this fear will not go past this. It will not go past this. It will not go past this. This weakness will not go past this. This is our crossover service. This weakness will not go past this. Are you ready to pray? Go ahead and talk to God. This jealousy will not go past this. Oh, Damande, this weakness will not go past this. No, Kobena, Kebena, this prayerlessness will not go past this. Elebe, Atabe, La Komena, Eleto, Manamba, this laxity. Ode, Ade, Ade, Ade. Oh, <laughs> This oppression will not go past this. Adabai, elabai, eleke benamba, alete menambre kopele. In him is life, and this life is the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. Adaba, daba, radaba, yakababa, shababa, rababa, yadaba, rata. This oppression will not go past this. And when he comes, he will come with his fan in his hand. No, 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 not me, not me, no, 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 Everything around my life that contradicts the word that was from the beginning. In the beginning, it was not so. It was not so. 
It was not so. It was not so. It was not so. It was not so. I come in the volume of the books as it is written concerning me to do your will, O God. To do your will, O God. I come, I come, I come, I come in the volume of the books. Anything around my life that was not written in that book concerning me. Ade, 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 ade. This anger cannot go with me. This anger cannot go with me. The power of masturbation is broken from my life. Every form of immorality, ekaba, ekaba, every weakness in my life, it will not continue. It will not continue. I'm not going back the way I came. Oh God, oh God, I will not let you go until you touch me. Bless me, oh God. Ada, elaka bombe, ita bombe na benata, elabam pe bena. Oh God, Ada, Ada, Ada. Ah, ayala baba, oh mata, Ada barata, Ada barata barata ma. <laughs> this is not me. This can't be me. This is not spoken of you concerning me. Baradabamba. This bitterness, this bitterness cannot continue. A lie, a lie, a lie, a lie, a lie, a lie. That desire 
is an impregnation. And the world is not a responsible father. And the Lord is saying that we should by prophecy command an abortion. And right now, at the count of three, but the bomb abortions are taking place now. Oh, 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 oh. One, Toko Paco, Shaka Toko Pe, Parata Palambra. That oppression, Akatai, is a seed, but is not of the world. Two, Parabeta Kopentabria Kobenanta, Prata Tabaleko Menataya. In the beginning, it was not so. What was not so from the beginning? Ceases to be so in your life. Three. In the name of Jesus. Copanante. Prata compecete caparataya. See abortions taking place. See abortions taking place. My God, my God. My God, yes, 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 yes. You will lose it. You will lose it. I assure you by the Holy Ghost. It's the word of the Lord from the throne of God. You are losing that pregnancy. You are losing it now. that is not consistent with the word of God. Oh, it's a seed that was not planted by the Lord. And Jesus has given us an instruction. He said, whatever is not planted by my father. Barata, babata, barata. They are rooted in the name of Jesus. That infirmity is an implantation but is not of the world ayeko mambe kape prata tapate kama nata we uproot it we uproot it oh 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 that's not your baby that's not your baby that's not your baby no, 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 no. That's not your baby. Kabai. Pata, pata. Pata, pata. Pata, pata. Ratata. Ta, 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 ta. Jesus. Voleme kombe. Adiku tuku pina kombe. Adaka tiki 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 baruti makambe. You are up today, you are down tomorrow. That's not your baby. Oh God boy. In the name of Jesus. Ah, ah no. That's not your baby. Katikuti. Atikiti kiti kita. Ora katande kete keta paratu. Ora baba bambras kabambro kopina kape. In the name of Jesus. It will not enter. It will not enter. Ah. It has expired. It ceases to be relevant in your life. And the light shines in darkness.
<laughs> in the name of Jesus we need to go we need to go but silence if you can if you can just silence if you can evacuations are going on evacuations evacuations are going on evacuations are going on right now as I speak evacuations just help help them help them evacuations are going on and the Lord is saying remove the drawers remove the drawers some of you will go back and realize that it seems as if your desires are being uttered see I, I beg you don't waste it this last few days of the year don't waste it don't waste it don't waste it there is an energy to push into something unbelievable don't waste it Evacuations are going on. When you are here, 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 when you are here. When you are here, when you are here, when you are here, the hearts of men will be melted again. <laughs> when you are here, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here. When you are here, 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 when you are here. Cause you are here, cause you are here, cause you are here. Ah, 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 ah. Let's go, let's go. In the name of Jesus, let's go. Let's go. Strange things are happening. See. Some of you will come and t t testify of this. You go home and these encounters and experiences will continue. For some of you, three days. For some of you, three days. L literally, for three days. You'll be, having, you'll be having strange visitations. You see, God is deliberate. That's, that's the thing. God is deliberate about your life shifting. God is deliberate because of the promises. He, I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but because of the promises He had made over your generation, He is deliberate about your life shifting. There's a particular lady that I'm, uh, when I said that, the Lord just began to tell me about a particular lady. And I'm speaking concerning you. Of course, it's a word for everybody. But I'm speaking concerning you. Because of the promises that the Lord has made over your generation. Specifically, 
your great help help me help me bring 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 the person bring that one bring, just bring 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 that person quickly but there is there's another there's another there's another there's a lady there's a lady bring bring them bring them there is still a lady The lady I'm talking about is wearing something like white. Do we have anyone like that? Do we have someone like that? Bring, 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 bring. Bring them. There is an utterance over your life. There's an utterance. And because of what God has, is insisting. God, you see, you see, the reason why this is happening here. It's not about them. It's a collective thing. God is deliberate and intentional about a generation. And that's why what is happening is happening. He's, he's saying that, you see, what I've spoken concerning you, it must come to pass. It must come to pass. So all the encounters that are needed to, to, uh, to cultivate that possibility that has, been, that has been shredded in his word, In the beginning, it was not so. <sighs> All eyes closed. All eyes closed. You can't enter next day like this. You see, can you believe God? Can you believe God? with me and you can't enter like this we have dwelt around this mountain for too long up and down back and forth with all the excuses you can't I don't know if you know about that but it's not just next year because it's 2023 there is a new season that is upon us and there is that which god is preparing men for you can't you can't joke with it you might have missed many seasons but by the grace of god by the mercies of god you will not miss this season Bring them up. Just quickly help me. Just help me. In the name of Jesus, we're going now. Please, we're going now. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. I don't know if you know, but this is a crossover service already. Yes. God is already preparing you. Don't joke with this one week. Don't joke with it. I don't know what you need to do, but you need to take it seriously. All eyes closed. If you're here, very quickly, very quickly, I want to pray for you. You're here and you're not born again. Or you were born again, but at some point you backslided. Or maybe you're not even sure. You don't even know which one, whether you're born again or not. There's such a thing as the assurance of salvation. And you want to say, I don't want to leave this meeting the way I came. I don't want to. The best thing that can happen to you is that you accept Jesus into your heart, that you receive his life. And your life is changed forever. Away from all of these ceremonies. All eyes closed as I'm praying. Wherever you are, you don't have to come out. But wherever you are, I want to pray for you. 
If you're like that, I want you to raise your hand above your head. God bless you. You're joining. I want you to join quickly. God bless you. If you're joining, please just stand. God bless you. I can see a hand there. If, you're, if your hand is up, please keep it up. Don't keep it down. If your hand is up, just keep it up. Don't keep it down. I want to pray. If you're joining them, join them quickly. You can see a hand there. I'm waiting for you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's the best decision of your life. It's the best thing that can happen to you. Every one of us had to make the decision at one point of our lives. If you want to join them, I want to pray very quickly. If you're joining them, as all eyes are closed, lift up your hand above your head. You want to say enough, enough. It's time to get serious with God. It's time to get real with him. It's time to know him personally and know him intimately. It's time for this light to shine bright in my life. If your hands are lifted, the sleep would have been given to you already. Um, if they've given you that sleep, just keep your hands up. I want you to talk to God where you are. Talk to God. I would lead you to pray, but I want you to talk to him first. Tell him you're sorry. I come to you as I am. Forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Ah! Kai. Kai. Please keep praying. Don't stop. There's a lady that is supposed to join these people right now as I speak. There's a lady. You are in a particular relationship that is literally destroying your life. What I'm seeing ahead of you is not looking good in 2023. To deliver yourself quickly. Quickly. You know that you're not supposed to be in this thing because it's not helping you. It's leading you astray. I'm waiting for you. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I'm waiting. I'm not cajoling you. It's just what I saw. I'm not, I won't even force you to do anything. But you need help. What the devil is plotting for 2023 with that relationship, the things are looking secret now. I speak in parables. But it won't be long. And why God is interested over your life is the fact that there is that which he wants to do in and through you. Yes. And you know, because there were times you had sensed it, but the distractions, the cares of this world. God bless you. Just talk to God. Wow. The love of God is overwhelming. Thank you, Jesus. All right, begin to wrap it up. I'm praying for you now. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as I am. I'm sorry for my wrongs. Acknowledge that you died for me. You shed your blood. And today I've come to accept your life. I ask that you be my Lord and my Savior. And I will be your sons and your daughter as the case may be. In Jesus' mighty name. Now I'm praying for you. Like I said, the sleep would have been given to you immediately after someone standing beside you will probably just direct you. And they will just want to say some few words of prayer with you, some few instructions, and that will be all. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these precious lives, these ones that have come to acknowledge you today, to receive you into their hearts, to receive your very life. You, who is able to keep us from falling, you will keep them from falling. 
The power of sin is broken from off their lives. From today henceforth, their path shall be as a path of the just that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. You will use them for your glory. It will not be up and down anymore. Yes, higher and higher you go in Christ.